Hi, Dr. Osborne here with Web Wellness University, and today I want to talk a little bit about calcium. Calcium is an essential mineral. The body can't make its own calcium, so calcium has to be obtained through eating, through the diet. And there are a number of different components that can cause calcium deficiency, and I want to start with some of those. Number one, we know that patients with gluten sensitivity, oftentimes gluten in the diet for these types of patients, will contribute to malabsorption, and that's one of the components that can lead to low levels of calcium. So gluten sensitivity. The other thing that we commonly see induce calcium deficiency are a number of different prescription medications or drugs. And so classes of drugs that might deplete calcium would include steroids. So taking steroids for chronic pain, we commonly see these patients developing calcium deficiencies. Antacid medications or proton pump inhibitors or other drugs that affect acid reflux or heartburn also contribute to or cause calcium malabsorption and contribute to calcium deficiency. We also have a lack of sunshine and uh, really more importantly a lack of vitamin D. Vitamin D tells your intestine to start to absorb calcium. So when we don't have adequate sunshine and we're not producing enough vitamin D in the skin, then what happens is we can become calcium deficient as a result of that vitamin D not communicating to our intestines that we need to absorb it. A lot of people are told to avoid sun and the problem with sunshine avoidance, it's not really so much dangerous in terms of cancer. I know that's what we've been told, but sunshine is actually very, very critical to make melatonin. It's very, very critical to make vitamin D. And avoidance of sun is going to create a lot more problems than getting too much sun exposure. So the general rule of thumb with sunshine is use common sense. Don't stay out long enough to burn, but don't smather up with SPF, with sun protection factor sunscreens, if you're not going to be out in the sun very long. So to the toleration of one's own limitations of skin burning is what we really want in order to maintain adequate sunshine. Now, other things that can cause calcium deficiency, foods that are high in sugar, such as soda, okay, and the bicarbonate in soda, those things are going to interfere and potentially contribute to calcium deficiency. Now, why is calcium deficiency such a problem? We said before that your body requires calcium to sustain normal function. There are a number of things that calcium is important for. The one we most of the one most of us know about is bone health. In other words, calcium is a mineral that helps to mineralize our bone, it makes our bones strong, it makes our bones calcified so that they're not fragile, so that they don't break, right? But this is just one of many functions of calcium. There are a number of functions. One of those functions is that calcium helps to regulate hormones. There's a system inside of our cells called a second messenger system. So what happens is when a hormone docks to your cell, to tell your DNA what to do, it communicates to calcium what that message is and then calcium delivers that message to the DNA. So without adequate calcium, we can get hormone suppression. This is important because a lot of times you go to the doctor and they'll measure different hormone levels and your hormone levels can be just fine, but if your calcium levels are low, we're gonna have this artificial hormone issue, in essence artificial because Hormone levels are normal, but they can't talk to your cell about what to do because there's not enough calcium for that message to be delivered. So calcium is very important for the translation of hormone messages to your cell nucleus. Additionally, we know that calcium is an electrolyte, and so why is that important? Calcium allows for nerves and brain tissue to communicate to the rest of your body. So your nerves talk to your muscles, they talk to your organs, your brain cells talk to other brain cells, your brain talks to your spine. All those nerve impulses require calcium as a means for them to occur. And this is why oftentimes with calcium deficiency with nerve and brain issues, we can develop muscle spasm is one of the more common symptoms, especially muscle spasms uh, in the calves. Those will primarily occur at night. It's one of the main symptoms of calcium deficiency. The other one of the other things that we see as calcium affects nerves, it affects the nerve system in the heart that allows the heart to contract properly and to beat properly, is that we can also see high blood pressure start to develop. So high blood pressure and muscle spasms can be two very, very common symptoms 
of calcium deficiency and we want to look out for. So if you've been diagnosed with either one of those conditions or if you have either one of those problems, you might ask your doctor to check your intracellular calcium levels. Remember, checking serum calcium levels, which is a standard test that most doctors are aware of, it's not an accurate representation of how much calcium is within your cell. And so what we really would like to see is your doctor run what's called an intracellular calcium level, and that can be done through a lab called SpectraCell Labs. So make sure he runs the right calcium test if he's looking to try to determine what's going on. Now, well, let me just back up here because there's one other thing that you want to be aware of. is a very, very common symptom of calcium deficiency as it affects the nervous system, and that is depression. Now, depression is one of the most commonly treated conditions in America today, and actually depression, any depressive medications are one of the most commonly prescribed. So that's another diagnosis if you have. You want to maybe consider calcium as a potential uh, to be contributing to that problem before developing, uh, or rather not developing, but before uh, starting to take prescription medications uh, that would potentially affect you when it's a possibility that it's a calcium deficiency. Now, in addition to bone loss, in addition to hormone dysfunction, in addition to electrolyte function, calcium also helps to serve as a blood clotting agent. So we get calcium. Uh, as a regulator of blood viscosity and that's very very important because if blood is too thin obviously you get a cut or something we're going to have too much bleeding that can occur and that can be a bad thing so all in all we've got a number of different functions that calcium plays a role in and we've got a number of different things and components that can contribute to calcium deficiency so you want to look out for these things in your lifestyle and remember Calcium is not best measured by doing a serum calcium test. It's best measured by looking at intracellular calcium levels. And one of the best ways to have that tested is uh, through a laboratory called SpectraCell Labs. So I hope you learned a little bit about calcium today, and I hope this was helpful for you. Dr. Osborne out, and I will see you next time on Web Wellness.